Hey and good morning everyone. Happy Monday to you. Um, I found the inspiration to get this project done and I'm going to keep this real time. I've had some questions or not questions but suggestions that I do longer videos and even though I work really quick um, today this one took me 24 minutes so I'm gonna keep it real time I'm going in that was me going in with a brown color pencil and a um, Stabilo Woody I'm just I call this putting energy in the page and kind of getting a flow I added a little water just to see what it would do this is in the large dilutions um, journal that I have and then I went directly in with some gold gesso this is Daniel Smith gold gesso and I'm I, yeah I mean such a technique here guys <laughs> really fancy I'm just fancy like that and I just splatted my hands in there and went wild and crazy and now I'm going to use some paper just to dab up some of the extra because ain't nobody got time to be waiting on that paint to dry. So, that's a good way to kind of keep your layers very thin. And the thinner your layers are, that means it's not going to take as long to dry. So, I'm going in with the Sea Breeze. This is an Americana paint, I believe and my paintbrush and again just continuing to layer and get a good foundation and kind of feel what I want to do on the page because I have no plan. Da -da, I know if you're new here to my channel this is kind of how I roll. I just get in there and play and let um, the good times roll. So going in, I got my paintbrush all, paint all on the paintbrush. So I'm trying to get it out because, I mean, God, who can afford to, like, waste that 97 cent paint or however much it costs. It wasn't much, I assure you. But this color is one of my ultimate faves, the Sea Breeze. And I found this little giblet of... I think that's craft paper. Actually, to be quite honest, I think it's part of a cardboard yeah I think it's cardboard like her what's it called Cor corrugated that's the word corrugated cardboard that I just um, took a piece off and had it laying on my desk because who can throw that away and I'm going in here with my Luca Payne's gray Luca is a artist quality paint and it is the most beautiful color of like deep, rich, um, not black, but it's kind of, it's a dark blue. And it's just, I don't know, it's a dreamy color. Anytime I need to add some darks, I always grab this color and it is amazing. And I'm going in here with a paintbrush, the Lucas. It's a very thick um, paint and then I'd also added a little bit of water. I'm going in here with my brayer. This brayer, if you haven't seen my videos before, this brayer doesn't get washed. Well, let's keep it real. None of my art supplies really get washed. I do randomly every once in a while after my brushes have been in the water for a few days. Oh, Wanda, don't leave another message. I know how you feel about the brushes. And if you missed that, you should totally follow me on Instagram because, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to move on from the Wanda comment. I have some Liquitex um, paints. I also have some more of that lovely cardboard. And then I also grabbed a stencil and um, some threads that were... <laughs> If you want to know the truth, they were laying on my floor and I thought, hmm, this is the universe telling me I need to use it. I'm going in with this very rich mustard color and it didn't really move and do the things that I wanted it to do. So now I'm just going to stick my fingers in it and help it move along. 
<sighs> so many classy techniques here on this channel, Southern Gals Designs. And, you know, if you don't have the colors that I use, it's okay. Grab whatever colors you got. This right here, my friends, came off of the good old clearance rock at Hobby Lobby. They never disappoint on those clearance sales, I tell you. And I went in with a very dirty paintbrush that had paint gray on it. <laughs> it just makes for a little mystery and interest when I do my pages like that. I just never know what I'm going to get. I'm going in. This is parchment here. It's a very nice um, light color. Allow me to add a little bit of lighter into the page that we have going on and then I'm taking that non-washed brayer that has the paint off. The children are just coming in from their walk and I'm just going to kind of mess it up and make it um, much more interesting I think with the brayer than it would have been if I just used um, a paintbrush or something. And that right there, guys, is my pajama top because I'm doing this on a Sunday and I'm off. And, you know, if you don't want to get out of pajamas, you ain't got to. Not around here anyway. And then I went in with a just a drawing pencil and kind of made some marks. And really this page is just all about layers and layers and layers and layers until you're happy. And if you're not happy, you just keep on layering is what I say. And I love how that parchment and that sea breeze just looks together. Oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm really just using all the paint up on that um, paintbrush. Dipping straight into the bottle because I'm so classy like that. Brayering it again. Oh, that was me sticking my head in because I saw the cats fussing out there. And now I'm going to grab this stencil. And this is just one of those, I guess, like, I don't know. It's not in the regular stencils. What's it in? The, I don't know. The other area where they have stuff like that. And then, of course, I was going to try to spray it. And the spray bottle was stopped up, which happens, right? And so this is not, this is an acrylic mist. So let's talk a little bit about that. Acrylic um, paints, once they are dry, they are dry. And so Deco Arts has this amazing product that allows you to spray the um, with acrylic ink and it doesn't move. Like if you try to do this with um, Lindy Stamp Gang or your dilution sprays, once you layer on top of that, you're going to notice that your layers are going to move. And for the most, like for me, I never know when I'm really done. You know, like I don't really think through the process enough to know. And I got black ink all over my hand too, which is real awesome, but it washed right off. So, acrylic sprays, the Deco Arts misters, do not water react, which is perfect for a mixed media project like this because I don't know what may happen next or what layers may come. And I, to be honest with you, I'm just not going to think about all that. So, if I know it's not going to reactivate, then I'm not going to have any surprises in the end, which surprises aren't bad. You see how I stencil. My goal was not to have a prominent letters and numbers. It's just to have a little something to gain a little interest. And that mister right there is black. So, and that's Penelope Jane saying hey to y'all too. Oh, you heard me talking about you. You're going to say, hey, Penelope Jane. She is my hairless dog if you don't follow her Instagram account. Penelope Jane's Adventures. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's a sweet baby. And I'm just going to dry that off really good before we go to the next layers because it is acrylic. 
but it does have to dry. So if I wanted to move this around a little bit while it was still wet, I definitely could. But once it's dry, it's there. It ain't going nowhere unless I decide to put um, paints on top of it. So I felt like I had covered up all of the peach colors. And I really felt like it would be great with the golds and the bold blacks to add in a little bit of that peachy color from the Stabilo Woody. And so I'm just randomly going in and going to make some marks with that Stabilo and then also going in with the 0.3 millimeter pencil. That's a super fine lead that allows you um, to make some interesting uh, marks a little different than what a normal pencil would do. So bringing in some more of that peach. Stabilo Woody's is like Stabilo All. So if you... Um, did put water on top of that they would move a little bit so I'm just adding it throughout because I think it's a really pretty peachy pink that's going to add a little something into the background and now I'm still completely clueless as to where this is going but I do have those threads that I found on the floor and so I know that I want to use those and so I'm just kind of looking throughout my giblets and seeing if there's anything that catches the eye. And this is um, a tea dyed piece of paper, a coffee dyed piece of paper that came from Reclaimed Mercantile on uh, Etsy. And I just used it to dab up some paints, I believe. And that's why it's got the um, Color Shift Orange, I think it is. And some of the paints gray on there. I'm taking my masking tape. I know y'all are all surprised about the products that I choose. And I'm just going to put a little masking tape here and there. Add a little texture to it. And I feel like that corner up there was very heavy with the dark. And so I'm going in here with several pieces of the masking tape just to kind of push that dark Payne's Gray into the background a little bit and cre also create a little texture there. Masking tape is a very versatile product, so I'm just adding a little bit there and a little bit there and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And now I'm going in here with the white mark saw and just making some random marks down there at the bottom. And that little tapping of the finger is me not knowing where in the heck this is going. And then I had this little giblet that was in my thing in this watercolor paper and I had torn the edge off of it. Now I'm going to glue it down. Just letting each layer build on top of the other to make a layered, fun, interesting. I'm taking that Lyra Graphite pencil and I'm just adding a little bit of grunginess to the masking tape. And I'm going in there into the gesso directly with my little finger. And I'm just adding a little bit more of the lights to it. Just a little bit here and there. I love the um, Deco Arts Media Gesso because you can dip your finger right into that jar. And it's perfect. I 
And now I still have the string and I don't know what I want to do with it exactly. But I do know that it's going to add a little something to the page. So I want to use it. And then I grab some of the um, some of the black and white tissue paper that um, someone sent to me. And I thought, well, maybe I'll use that. And then I thought, well, maybe it's just the page piece is too large so I will kind of cut it down and see if I like it and I actually like it very well now that it's on the camera but at that particular moment when I was doing it just didn't feel all that great so I was like well I'm not going to use it And actually, I stuck it down, I think, and then looked at it, and I didn't. I thought I was going to just love it right there, and then it turns out it was pulling my eye to a place where I didn't feel it should be pulled to. And sometimes that's, it's just really by feeling to me and what I like and what's visually appealing versus what's not. And so I had this other little giblet of paper that actually started out as under paper, which is newsprint that I use um, directly onto my work surface. And so it usually picks up some pretty interesting colors that can lend its way to a start of a background and so I'm just doodadding with that to figure out which side. And that's another thing. I like to flip things over and look at the front and the back. Even though it may just be um, kind of not intentionally pretty on the back. Sometimes I like the back side of something opposed to the front side. So always look at the back and the front just to see um, which side you like better. And then I like that little lighter spot for my focal image here this is one of the tim holtz i think they're called photo booth and i'm taking a fingernail buffer block that you get at like sally's or the beauty supply and i'm just roughing everything up a little bit with that like you would sandpaper and then i'm going to take the strings And I'm going to kind of layer and put them over and around the face to bring your eye to that. I'm going to use the um, matte gel medium. I think this is heavy duty or maximum strength or whatever they call it. But you could use just about anything here just to tack those threads around and get them good and stuck down. And I knew that I wanted to use um, a staple, a stapler, and I could not find my regular long handle stapler. I know it's here somewhere. It's probably under a pile of, of paper somewhere, but I couldn't find it at that particular time. So I decided I was going to use the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, and I'm going to stick down a few staples just to hold it in place. Just three staples around the side there. Adds an extra pop of little industrial look and texture. And then I had a piece of pink that was on that um, watercolor paper and I didn't really like it. It was distracting to me. So I just covered it up with some of that sea breeze that was already in the page. And now I took a picture just to see and I felt like that area 
was super heavy in the top and I still wasn't really loving it so I'm gonna cover up and mute some of that background out so if you have a page and you like where it's going but you still have an area where you're not real sure about it I would highly recommend getting um, your camera phone out and taking a quick picture and just looking at it and see if anything is kind of pulling you away from the focal itself and if it is, then you can always just cover it up. And I actually didn't like how heavy that gray area got. So I'm going to pull my mechanical pencil in, make some lines. Just kind of playing with that. I didn't really like it. But I did some have, have some of this drywall tape on my table. So I'm going to peel off a little bit of that. If I can get my fingernail in there. And I'm going to stick some of that down. To just kind of uh, add a little zip of texture to the page. And it takes me forever. But y'all said y'all wanted a real time video. So that's what you got. Do, 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 do. How long will it take till Tiffany gets through? Oh, abracadabra, there we have it. It's a miracle. Tiffany finally figured out how to peel that sticky part off. And now to determine which piece I'm going to use. Just a little dab will do you, and I think I'm going to go with this and pull it up a little bit right in that corner so it looks like it's kind of peeking out from under it. Going in directly with my finger and a little gesso. Again, just to cover up that heaviness that that gray made and adding a little pop of white here and there around the page. And we're about to get ready to wrap this up. I'm going to find... A few, a few little places to add some masking tape because you can never go wrong with that. And then I'm going to reach and get my large font book that I found a few little words that I wanted to use. And that's pretty much going to be it for the day. I do turn around and add those words right there in the far left corner and they say almost took her breath away and I thought that was perfect for the page because that black in the corner almost took my breath away so I hope you enjoyed this real-time video layers and layers um, when in doubt, sometimes pages just take a while, so keep layering until you like it, and sometimes you have to step away and come back with fresh eyes, and so I hope you enjoyed today's video. It is a little longer than normal, so let me know if you like the length that this one is. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. I hope it has inspired you to get in your, um, little studio and make lots of mess. Click that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up. And until next time, toodaloo!